So um, welcome everyone to the student engagement using Microsoft Teams. I'm actually kind of showing off one of the new features in Teams that without even meaning to, I just kind of pushed push this type of presenter mode. Um, but this is actually what one of the options now is in Microsoft Teams. It's to put yourself over your presentations so that if you want to point to things, if you want to highlight things, you absolutely can. And I love that feature in the Microsoft Teams space. So I'm just going to switch to my next slide. Let me know if it's does it switch for you. It should switch. Yes. Good, perfect. So I am Alex. I am joining you from Montreal and I'm covering Trish, but Trish can maybe take two seconds to introduce herself. She's going to kind of be on the quiet back end of things, but I will be the wizard behind this lovely lady today. Uh, yeah, I'm Trish Rofi and I'm an ed tech consultant here in Edmonton, Alberta. There we go. So we like to always take a couple of minutes at the beginning of the presentation or a couple of moments just to recognize the fact that we are probably sitting on or presenting from some of the traditional territorial lands here. So from the place that I currently am, I am um, working and presenting from the traditional Mohawk territory. If you ever want to know where you are presenting from, there's that great link right there, which is native-land.ca, and that will actually tell you where you're sitting on. So that's kind of a fun activity to do right at the beginning of the school year, is to figure out exactly where you are, what land does your school sit on, and just take a moment to recognize that. Uh, another thing, a massive congratulations and thank you to the Cobblestone Collective. They are the wonderful people that we work for who bring you these wonderful free workshops. Um, that is our website right there, cobblestonecollective.ca. If you ever want to see what resources we have, what we offer, the different um, courses that we're offering all through the school year, that is the place that you check that out. It's cobblestonecollective.ca. Also, if you would like to follow along, Trish has very kindly put in the chat the link to the PowerPoint presentation. You have this available to you as a resource, including all of the links, etc., that we're going to cover. So I'm someone who talks quickly, but I'm going to try and go through the content slowly, so at least we can kind of cover everything. But here are kind of the five pieces that we're going to look at today. So the first one is going to be a general Teams overview. I'm just going to quickly walk through the platform, make sure you know where to find it, how to find it, and what you've got there in case we kind of need that bit of a brain refresh for the beginning of the school year. Then I'm going to talk through how you can do engagement during an online class. So I'm going to talk about if we're in a meeting like we're in right now, and if you are in that virtual space, what kind of different activities can you do with the students during a meeting that isn't so much just teacher talk, student listen? What can we actually do to get the students to be hands on? How can we get them involved in the actual presentation or virtual class? That's what we're going to talk through. The second part is going to be exploring engagement through Flipgrid which is a really cool tool if you've never seen it before. I'm going to do a quick introduction to Flipgrid. What is it? How can we use it? And I'm going to go through a demo of how you can actually integrate that straight into Microsoft Teams, how you can actually pull right away a Flipgrid into Teams. Don't worry if you've never heard of Flipgrid before. It's no big deal. We'll get there. And then last but not least, it wouldn't be a workshop with me if I didn't talk about accessibility because that is something that I'm extremely passionate about. How do we make sure that we make our content accessible to all learners across a variety of needs? So it wouldn't be a workshop if I didn't talk about that. We're big about accessibility, so I'm going to talk about that. And then the last thing that we're going to wrap up with is the summer ed and the resources. So all the different resources that you guys may need to have access to and the program called Summer Ed or Summered by Microsoft. So before I actually jump completely into this presentation, what I would like from everyone in the chat is to let us know where you're joining us from and what subject or grade you are going to be teaching for the rest of the 2021 school year. So in that chat space, please let us know one, where you're joining us from and two, what subject or what grade you're going to be teaching for the 2021 2022 school year. If you're looking for that chat space, it really is just that bubble inside the uh, top of your screen. I'm just going to stop sharing my screen for one second and I'm going to go back and share it in a different way. So hang tight with me here. I'm going to just get that up for us. And I'm going to see where everyone's joining us from. 
So do, 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 do. I'm excited, Alex. We have somebody from from Edmonton. Pat L is in the house. Ooh, it's warm in the city today. That's so fun. <laughs> okay, let's get that going. Let's see, let me see. Okay, where else have we got people from, Trish? We have got a great mix. We've got already. We've got you know early elementary all the way up to, to, to secondary education. We've got people from Toronto, Orangeville, Montreal, Sudbury. This is fantastic. We've, we've got, basically we're representing Canada today. We're like our own mini back to school Olympics here across so uh, Canada. I'm so glad. I love one of the subject areas. We've got all subjects, isn't that a thing? Teachers have to be able to teach all subjects. We've got everything from language arts, math, science, social studies. I love it. You're gonna love teams for all of this. Do absolutely everything. That's yeah. not too much to ask, is it? <laughs> okay, so I am going to share my screen again with you guys. And I'm just gonna go through and give kind of a brief overview of um, the first part of today, which was really going to be all around the Office 365. How do I kind of get into this Microsoft Teams space? So I'm just going to pull up my PowerPoint, which should be here. And you have a couple of different ways. Just let me know if you can see my screen. I'm sure you can, but you should be able to see my PowerPoint at the moment. Awesome. Thanks, Bettina. I see your thumbs up. That was very helpful. Um, so on this page, I'm just showing you a website that you can use to go and find your Office 365 account. If you are not sure where to find Teams, you can come to it through this online environment. And so if I literally just go into portal.office.com, it's going to get me to sign in. You'll probably have to use your school email address. And then all of a sudden, here we are. I'm going to be bumped into my Microsoft Office 365 space where we'll see that Microsoft Teams logo on the left hand side. It's that little purple logo. So again, it's just portal.office.com. You'll sign in using your school email and then it will bring you to your Office 365 homepage where you can simply click Teams and be bumped straight into Teams. If you would like, and actually something that we really suggest, you might wanna use the Microsoft Teams actual desktop application. As the facilitator, as the educator, you actually get a lot more options when you use the Microsoft Teams app for the desktop. So I've put in the um, in the presentation a link to download. It's a link for Mac or PC. It doesn't matter which one you work on. And then the next slide there is going to be how to connect to it. So if you work on a PC, how do you find the Teams app? If you work on a Mac, how do you find the Teams app? Um, what's really nice is that Microsoft is actually pretty good about making sure that things come out at the same time. So usually, um, as of about 2021, we usually get the same things at the same time. So try to use that desktop app. Doesn't matter if you're PC or Mac, it'll be there for you. You can use that Teams app. It's very easy to use. If you open it on the desktop, it might look something like this. So this is my Microsoft Teams kind of home page. As I said, I'm sure over the next few months, you guys will have the opportunity to, to join us, the Cobblestone, for many more Microsoft Teams sessions. But this is the platform that you can use to interact with your students. So you have the ability to chat to them. You've got all the different virtual classrooms that you'd like to use. You've got a place to send out assignments. You've got a calendar to organize when assignments are due, when meetings are due, and you've got the op opportunity to look at all the different files across all of your different classrooms. So kind of think of this, like kind of think of your Microsoft Teams space as your virtual school. In that virtual school, you've got a place to talk to everyone. You've got a place to talk to all the different classes. You've got a place to have a calendar for all of your events, your parent teacher meetings, your staff meetings, all of that can kind of be organized in this space. What we're going to talk about mostly today, since we're really focused on that student engagement piece, is around a classroom. So how do we kind of have that classroom space? And again, don't worry if this is overwhelming or brand new. We will be offering many more workshops for you to learn about Teams, but today is kind of just to get you excited and get you thinking about what you might be able to do next year. 
So you've got three classes. I'm a teacher in this, this scenario. I've got three different classes. I maybe I've got geometric gardens, so I'm doing a, like plants, like a, maybe a science class. I've got health and fitness, and I've got my amazing and incredible class. Those are my three classrooms. I'd have different students in each of those classrooms. I'm going to go to my first class, and this is it. Microsoft Teams offers so many possibilities, but the one thing I'm going to talk about right now, which was the first piece, is how do we actually get students to kind of collaborate and engage both in that virtual classroom space and just using Microsoft Teams? So Microsoft Teams is really great about having a lot of options for collaboration and communication with students. So I called this section Stop, Collaborate and Listen. You should get that if you get that song. But in here, what Microsoft Teams has is a files area for everybody to work in. So if you want to get students collaborating so easily, working on the same document, collaborating on a project, whether that's a PowerPoint project or whether that's a Flipgrid, you can do that by using that files tab right inside your Microsoft Teams space that gets students working simultaneously. So what's so great about Microsoft Teams is that as soon as you put something in there, students and yourself, you can collaborate in live time. So you can see who's actually working in the document, see what they've contributed, leave comments for each other, leave feedback right away. It's instantaneous. So students don't have to create their own version of every single document, send it to you, you look at it, correct it and send it back, then send each other the work so you can have maybe like self-evaluation or group evaluation. Just dump the document into Microsoft Teams. Everybody can hop on it at once and they can just start working right away. So having that quickness there and getting them to collaborate on documents at once, I think it's fantastic. If you've never had the chance to collaborate with your students live, it's such a fun experience. You can put in a question and then all of a sudden all of your students can start answering in the same place. This is what I would call kind of more of a traditional way of collaborating because it's very written. It's very document based. You're going to see in a second how that can be transformed using Flipgrid and to make it a little bit more interactive. So Microsoft Teams as the platform, as I said, kind of think of it as your virtual school. You've got your virtual classrooms and in those classrooms you have a lot of flexibility to kind of do whatever it is that you want as i said in that file space it's incredibly easy to just come in create a brand new anything that you want in this case let's say it's a word document and then automatically if i said like day one adventures i'm really on this theme today as you'll see i've just built a document it's completely accessible to all of my class and we can all start working right away. So it's very fast. It's really easy to get students working together, especially if we want to keep them engaged. We have to be able to get their hands on right away. So that's that one piece. Again, just know that it's there. As I said, today is kind of that wetting your whistle, getting you excited for what could come. Know that that's a possibility to get them collaborating. The next piece that's really important is actually around our um, chats and our calls. So don't worry, you're going to see yourself in double. I'm actually just going to turn off my incoming video so it's not super overwhelming as you watch this. So this is the Microsoft Teams call that we are all in at the moment. So as you can see, as I make my screen larger, I can see more people. So how do we actually get people engaging and collaborating with us in a call? It's actually pretty simple, so I'm going to cover a, cover a few key pieces that might be interesting for you. So as you should see everybody in the call at the moment, you should be able to see the participants list. So you can say who's here, who's working, who's actually a part of our class. So that's piece number one is that participants. The next super easy way to get people to collaborate is right here through the chat. So I ask everyone to join me by saying where they're where they're joining us from. I can ask any other question like if you could only eat one food for the rest of your life, what would you choose? This would be my answer. I 100% would eat pizza because I think I could eat it for breakfast, lunch and dinner. I would never get bored of it. And um, so that is an easy way to have that interaction, that collaboration right away. You've got that chat space. 
You've also got the ability in here to leave emojis. So everyone should have that little smiley face there. I want everybody right now to send me the emoji for how they're feeling about going back to school in a couple of weeks. So send me your emoji. Let me know how you're feeling. I think I'm feeling kind of a little bit dizzy. I'm not really sure how it's going to go, what it's going to look like. But again, quick way to get students excited and engaged. Get them talking to you. That chat space using those emojis or even gifts if you want to. Someone might be feeling very sad about the fact that they have to go back to school. You can kind of play around with that using those gifts and those emojis if you'd like to. So that's another way to get them engaged. A third really interesting way to get them engaged in your online classroom is if you notice at the top here, I've got that conversation bubble. You've actually got this thing called reactions. So you're asking students, we do it in a regular classroom all the time, thumbs up if you've got it, thumbs down if you're not sure. So if this is making sense to everyone, give me a thumbs up or show me applause or give me a heart, whatever it is that you might like. If I do that, then we'll see that I actually get a like up on my screen. So you guys can give that one a test as well. Use that to give a reaction or a response to maybe a question that I'm asking. That's another way to get those students engaged right away. There's Mandy is giving me clapping. There we go. I can see exactly what's happening and it's popping up on the screen. So I get that feedback right away from my students. That's really important. The other key piece, and again, we'll go into this in way more detail in other workshops, but it's just supposed to kind of like tease you into learning a bit more. In those three dots, Microsoft has this incredible tool called together mode. So I'm just warning you, if your camera is on, you're about to be seen, but Microsoft puts us in a pretend classroom. So if you would like to put your camera on, you can. That way we can kind of all see each other. And what I can do, I, there's Trish, hi Trish. I can actually put us into a different background. So let's say I wanna have kind of like a school background where we actually look like we're in a classroom. Well, I can actually put you guys and all of us in desks. And you can see that by just not being in that four by four square, we're kind of already a bit more together. I can point to Trish. I know she's right there. I can point to my students. Someone can point to the other students. So that feeling of kind of being in a in a barrier and disconnected by all being on our own individual screens, together mode is such a fun way to do um, an actual collaborative environment. And if I change the scene, I can change it to a bunch of different things. We can we can put ourselves if you have students that are lovers of Minecraft. Well, welcome. Now we're actually in a Minecraft world and we can teach through Minecraft literally. So some really fun, quick tips and tricks for making a regular meeting a little bit more exciting simply by using that Microsoft Teams space. Um, the more people that turn on their camera, the bigger that this screen will ex expand to. So I think that the biggest classroom is 47 students that you can actually see individually at once. And again, this is totally available to you in Microsoft Teams right now. I'm going to turn off together mode so we don't get distracted by Minecraft and our, and our beautiful faces. I'm going to get us out of there. Um, but that's just one of the important things that you can have in Microsoft Teams and that get that engagement going straight away. OK, so I am now going to go in and talk about one last thing in the Microsoft Teams space. And um, that is going to be the ability to have, as I said to you, live captions or accessibility. So Microsoft Teams and Microsoft actually as a whole really drives home accessibility. So if you've got a student that um, is hard of hearing and you want to have captioning actually available to you in your Microsoft Teams space, you absolutely can. All you need to do is say turn on live captions and that will actually start auto generating captions across the bottom of our screen. So Anything that I say will automatically be auto captioned for those students. And as you can see, it says cobblestone because that's the name that I'm registered in. But if anybody else was to talk, it would actually put their real name. So we can have multiple people having a conversation and it will automatically auto caption for 
the students that might need to actually see the words as they're being spoken. If you are running this in your own school, in your own environment with all of your students, you'll also have the ability to have a transcript. So you can get a transcript for everything that was said. So again, if you're one of those students or you have those students that reviewing and hearing things more than once is really important to you or important to that student, having that transcription is there is key. OK, now why are some of these options grayed out for me at the moment? Like, why can't I do the transcription? Why can't I do the recording? That's simply because at the moment we're all joining from a variety of different accounts. So I'm in one account that's associated to one school. Trish is in another. All of you may be in a whole bunch of different um, domains, different email addresses that aren't necessarily linked right to ours. And that's why some of those features aren't there. Sometimes they're disabled when you're talking to people outside of your school district. So it's important to know that when you are talking with your own students, none of these grayed out things will be will be giving you issues. You should be able to send chats, emojis, GIFs, and all of that when you're talking with your students. So those are a couple of quick ways there we go that you could talk to your students in a regular Microsoft Teams meeting if you're going to be working with them in that context of maybe some some hybrid or online learning. So that was part two. So so far we've seen how to what Microsoft Teams looks like. We've talked about how to actually interact with them in a meeting. We've talked about that accessibility piece around closed captioning. And last but not least, what I'm going to talk about is Flipgrid. So Flipgrid really simply put is, and I literally wrote the most simple slide I could possibly think of about Flipgrid. It is a video discussion tool. So maybe versus just having that simple write and respond, we want to kind of amp things up and get students talking about what they know, sharing what they know using a video tool. And that's where Flipgrid comes so in handy. So if I open my Microsoft Teams space, <coughs> excuse me, I'm just going to get a sip of water. I can actually integrate Flipgrid straight in, and I've done that right here. So what I've said is Flipgrid is an online video discussion tool, but that's totally protected by your own group. So you create a virtual classroom. It links to Microsoft Teams. It links to Google Classroom. You have your students in one space and it allows you to have a question and answer period with your students, but having them film. So what I've got here is something called a summer adventure. It's put on by me, the teacher. I'm going to go in and I'm going to see exactly what the presentation is all about. And I'm just going to make sure I'm sharing my sound with you. So give me one second. I'm going to share. I'm going to include the sound, so hang on one moment. Just going to make sure that when you guys will actually be able to hear my video and then we will get going. There we go. So I included the sound. So this is what I sent to my students. In one minute or less, I'd love to hear about how you spent your summer, but more importantly, I want to hear about a summer adventure. If the students are audio learners or visual learners and they want to hear that same explanation they'll be able to hear it so there is my screen i'm going to share that with you again now there we are and if i go to my flip grid this is what it looks like so this is what students would see this is the explanation for them they can listen to my video so this will play it hi everyone and welcome back they can listen to my summer adventure video and now my students can actually respond on their own so they can add a response it's going to look for my camera. Here it is. I can add some backdrops in. So let's say I want to go with something that looked like summer to me, and I'm going to actually record my little video. So it'll count down. Hi, Miss Alex. I'm so excited to be back to school. Not, I really want a few more weeks of vacation, but something really exciting happened to me this summer. I went on a three day bike ride and my dad made me sleep outside the whole time in a tent and we cooked hot dogs every night and it was amazing. So that was the best summer adventure I went on. Students, hi, Miss Alex. That. I'm so excited to be back to school. 
They can listen to it. They can add music. They can give a description about what they did. They can go in and say in words if you'd like them to write it, and they can submit that in. That goes straight to the teacher or to the educator. And now you have a student that instead of just having that simple written feedback, you've actually used Flipgrid to do the talking and the back and forth interaction. And why am I talking about Flipgrid? Well, because as I said, it actually integrates straight into Microsoft Teams. So if I wanted to, I could actually post that into Microsoft Teams by simply clicking on the plus button at the top inside my team, inside my classroom, going to get Flipgrid. I can actually enter that Flipgrid code. So every different Flipgrid has a code. I can put that in. So if I go and get that little Flipgrid code, if I want to share that out, so Summer Adventures, I am going to get that Flipgrid code. There it is. I can copy that and paste that straight into my Microsoft Teams space. And then all of a sudden, I'm really happy to go and post that. And you can see it actually gets posted straight to my Microsoft Teams space right here where students can now go in and fill that out. You can also send it out as an assignment. So, so many interesting and exciting ways that we can integrate Teams and engagement into our classroom, whether it's a virtual classroom or not. So we've got literally three minutes. I feel like it's been on fast forward the whole time, but I hope you guys have had the chance to learn a little bit more, see a little bit more about what Microsoft Teams might offer you. I'm going to go through these resources really quickly with you. Because you've participated in this PD session today, Microsoft actually will give out a badge to you as a certificate of PD. Where do we go to get that? It's a place called the Microsoft Educator Community. So if you actually just click on the link, which we will have shared out to you in the, um, in the, what, what's the word I'm looking for? The presentation. I am going to open that up and show you that Microsoft actually has some free summer courses available to you. It's called Summer Ed. And in here, you've got lots of different courses you can take. So cross-curricular connections with Minecraft, using OneNote, um, engagement and assessment in Minecraft. Um, we've got a bunch of different options here for well-being for educators. These are all free workshops that are available to you inside that Summer Ed program. And this is all on the Microsoft Educator community. You've also got on the next slide, two other courses that I've linked for you, one being the hybrid learning and one being the empower every student in an inclusive classroom. And again, these are completely free. They're available to you to use and to learn from if you're interested in doing a bit more PD professional development before the summer uh, completely comes to a close and you will be back in the classroom. So again, in that PowerPoint presentation, I've linked both of those courses available to you. I've linked that summer ed program and I've given you your code. If you follow either of those courses, it will actually encourage you to put in that code so that you get to claim your badge for having participated today. And last, but certainly not least, I would like to just give a shout out to Cobblestone and the amazing services that we offer. Um, we always have a support email that's available to you, so that it's help at cobblestonecollective.ca. That is an email address that you can write to. We are real humans who really take care of, of the people that write to us on there. So if you have any questions about anything that you saw today, that is where you can go. Write to us. We are happy to help you. We will guide you to the right resources. And the other piece that we actually ask from you is the feedback link, which I think Trish, Trish actually just shared in the chat. We love to hear feedback. One of the beauties of working with Cobblestone Collective is that we actually tailor our sessions to whatever it is that you would like to see. So please give us some feedback on how today's speedy workshop went. I know it's quick. I know it's jam packed, but we hope that this makes you excited for some of the things that you may get to discover this year in your classrooms using Microsoft Teams and using Flipgrid as a way to engage your students. So thank you so much for taking this quick half hour out of your Thursday. Your time is always appreciated. Everything in that slide deck is linked there for you. All you need to do is make sure that you have access to that. 
Thank you so much for your participation, for your time. I hope it was a, a good learning opportunity for you and started to get you thinking and excited about the entrance back into the classroom. So thank you so much, and I hope you guys have an amazing rest of the week. Good luck with your back to school, and thanks for taking the time out of your day.